My name is Christine Kunda, and I'm the host of The Africa We Want on New Africa TV. Uh, the Africa We Want is a show about young people in the African context making changes to the African vision, bringing a new vision to the African continent. These are young people who are passionate about changing lives, changing their lives, changing other people's lives, and changing their communities. It takes one step at a time for us to have the Africa we want. Join me as I bring to you different African young people as they tell us how they're making changes in their societies. I am passionate about this project and I'm glad and looking forward to you joining me every week on New Africa TV. Thank you. Okay. Good day, this is New Africa TV. I'm your host, Christine, and this is the Africa we want. Today, I'm speaking to Mike Shamba. Mike is a young entrepreneur in Johannesburg, and we want to learn more about what Mike is doing. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you for having me, Christine. I'm so happy to be here. Tell us more. Who is Mike? Well, Mike is a young man. Um, I'm still young. I'm not 30 yet. In South Africa, they say uh, youth stops at, at what age? 35. 35. So I'm still a young man. I'm still a youth. Uh, basically, I'm all the way from Congo, but I came here, it's been 13 years ago. Um, I came here with one purpose, to study, and uh, I did my high school at Jules High School, and then I went on to complete my university studies in mechanical engineering design at Val University of Technology. And uh, beside that, Mike Shamba is a young man full of energy, potential, and passion about young people and entrepreneurship. Uh, I believe that Africa uh, will rise only when we have entrepreneurs. So I work so hard in building entrepreneurs um, throughout our communities, and uh, we're looking forward to extending this even into uh, other parts of Africa. Wonderful. Mm. I love that statement. Um, tell us more about uh, your project, which is the Motivational Club. Yes. Uh, basically, the Motivational Club is a company uh, with two faces. Uh, first of all, we deal with publishing. We publish uh, independent authors. Um, you can see some of the books over there. Um, uh, we, we, we do that to try and, and push Africans to write more. Uh, we believe that Africa, Africans uh, do have a lot of stories that they can tell, inspiring stories uh, in that matter. Uh, could be in a business uh, perspective. We have guys that have started their businesses from zero with zero income or zero, zero capital, and today they're earning millions and, and all that. So we need to hear such stories. And one of the greatest platforms uh, for us to learn, yes. it's through putting it in, into books. As they say, a leader is a reader. So we want to build more leaders through reading and through the, uh, cultivating um, uh, um, uh, the culture of writing. Wonderful. So and uh, that's the first aspect of our company. Uh, sorry. The second aspect of our company, we deal with um, um, companies uh, whereby we offer training programs for companies. Um, if a company needs to increase their sales, increase their leadership uh, um, abilities through their the, the staff members, we, they, we provide speakers who are well equipped to bring about such uh, programs to the companies. Okay, so the yeah. Motivational Club is um, also producing the books. Yes. And um, I, I see one of the books that Mike came with is, is one of his books, which is a, a very nice book. Uh, it's called The Nuggets for Life, The Pursuit of Purpose. Yes, ma'am. What inspired you to write this book? Um, I would say the first inspiration um, in writing this book was exposing myself through materials that um, I needed for self-development and self-growth, yes. uh, which I stumbled upon a great man, the late Miles Monroe, uh, who used to write a lot about purpose, who used to write about instigating uh, uh, people to tap into their potentials and making sure that they don't leave this planet um, as they came but when you leave this planet you need to leave this planet empty as he said um, in other words giving back to the world what God uh, placed in you so it was in that in that perspective or in that light that I also uh, thought of writing a book uh, telling my own story uh, from a disadvantaged background that I come from that I came from how I evolved and how I got to where I am today running a business being a mechanical engineer and I believe that um, there are principles in that book that you can put into, into play and you see and you will see transformation uh, in your life. Well, I, I can't mm. wait to read this book. Uh, you said you're a mechanical engineer. Yes, ma'am. On paper. 
<laughs> an ent- entrepreneur in, in practice. In action. <laughs> yes, definitely. Absolutely. So, um, tell me about uh, your, h- do you use your mechanical b- background? Uh, um, my, my academical background just comes in as a booster when, when I am invited to address a certain categories of people. Yes. For instance, uh, if I need to go speak into companies, if I need to speak to young people, it's, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually something that I use to inspire young people with, that you, can, uh, that you cannot just limit yourself um, in being an academics, but you can also be an entrepreneur at the same time. So I come there not only as an entrepreneur, but also as somebody who went through the system, who went through school, Yes. And I've passed my school with flying colors, with distinctions, but I'm here as well as a businessman. Perfect. So are you saying um, we need to have an academic background to be entrepreneurs? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, but from the African perspective, we yes. believe so much in education. You know, uh, if you ask any African parent, um, let's, say, let's say your child comes to you and say, Mom, I want to quit school and run a business. You it's will say no. It's not happening. <laughs> you, will t- you, will t- <laughs> you will tell your kid, it's not going to happen. Mm. You must finish your school first. Yes. So you don't necessarily have to be an academic for you to run a business. Yes. But as, as something that we can, it's something that we can use to inspire another person out there who wants to do something probably contrary to what they studied in school. Yes. Mm. That's wonderful. So um, obviously you've had challenges in your walk as, as an entrepreneur. For you to start writing this book, I'm sure you've had uh, difficulties to get to this point. So Absolutely. Tell me some of those difficulties and how you overcame them. Um, well, I had a lot of challenges, um, a lot of challenges. First of all, from the belief point of view, yes. you know, in, uh, in, in the African context, it's not easy to start something that people don't usually do. You see, for instance, I want to be a speaker. People will be like, are you crazy out there? How are you going to make money? Exactly. You know? um, so I had, I had a lot of challenge in that perspective whereby um, a lot of people, some of my family members, my friends, they couldn't understand what I wanted, uh, what I wanted to do. They thought it was a waste of time. They thought what I was doing was a waste of time. I can imagine. Uh, you know, uh, th- some of them will just sit down and say, okay, let's see, let's <laughs> see where, where it's going to end up with all these things. But, but it's through persistence and consistency that I came to believe that anything is possible if you put your mind into it and if you are really persistent and you work so hard in trying to achieve whatever that you want to achieve. Yes. Today, I got now people who used to despise me in the past who now called me to come and address the, their youth, people in their companies and stuff like that. Why? Because they saw the persistence, the hard work and the determination that I had through doing whatever that I'm doing. Okay, so apart from that challenge, did you have any financial challenges? Of course. Of course, financial challenges uh, uh, will always be there, more especially in, uh, from the African uh, context again. Uh, we have one problem, which is resources and tapping into funds. Yes. I had a huge problem, uh, a huge challenge in terms of when I wanted to start the business. Um, I remember, I remember when, when I was writing my book, my book was complete and all that, but then I couldn't print it. Why? Because I did not have enough money. Yes. So my mentor actually I borrowed me money to print my first, uh, my first copies. And after printing my first copies, with the capital that I had, I started saving money. Uh, putting aside to build the business yes. and to also reprint my books. And that's how I actually overcame the challenge. Wonderful. So sometimes, sometimes, if you don't have the resources, hang on to people that have the resources, who believe in you, yes. who can probably lend you the money or even give you the money, but then prove them right at the end of the day. I'm not, I'm not trying to say prove them wrong, prove them right at the end of the oh, day. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should hang out with Mike more often so I can prove myself right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, you're so involved in a lot of things. You are, you, I, I can tell that you are obviously involved uh, in church and you, you have a company to run, a company which has also got a lot of other things on the side Absolutely. that you're doing and projects. Mm-hmm. How do you control all these things? You're one person. How do you manage? Do you watch TV? Do you have time to catch up on series? <laughs> like, Okay, um... Uh, I'm a very boring man to date, eh? so <laughs> so so if you're a lady and you want to date me, don't think about that. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 
I believe in collaboration. Yes. Um, you you have to find people that fall into the same category as you, and try and collaborate with them mm. in making a life very easy for yourself. I do work with people. I do have people that I work with, so I'm not a one man show. Okay. Um, I do have people that deal with a lot of things in the company. Uh, we do have sec a secretary. We do have people that deal with um, editing. People that deal with trying to get. Uh, clients out there for our for our training programs yes. um, and all that. So, but then from the onset when I started off, it was very difficult because I was the only one doing all these things. But then, um, the key thing is the key thing for me was to start with one thing first. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think in every business, if you want to succeed, you get you got to start with one thing first. Don't Definitely. try and combine too many things at the same time. I did not start with all these projects. I started with one thing first, which was focusing more on selling my books, getting my books out there, and getting myself as a speaker out there. Yes. So that's what I started with. But then as time grew and people started believing into, the pro into my ideas and stuff, and they started working with me, then we started branching out into organizing projects for young people, uh, entrepreneurship projects and all that. Okay, so what is the one thing that you would tell an, uh, a young person out there in high school, in, in, in university, and they want to be an entrepreneur, what, what, what is your one thing that you would want to instill in them? Um, first of all, first of all uh, you know, when we talk about entrepreneurship, uh, many a times we have only theoretical um, uh, platforms. Yes. Uh, I would like to use this occasion maybe just to introduce a project that I'll be that I'll be running throughout Africa. Wonderful. It's called um, a Building a Thousand Entrepreneurs in Two Years. Uh, what, what we want to do is we want to collaborate with the churches uh, all over Africa. Uh, we got already churches that are in collaboration with us in Congo, Congo, Brazzaville and uh, Cameroon and Nigeria. Uh, what we want to do is with my upcoming book which will be launched in July we want to uh, work with the churches in terms of working with the youth of the churches, uh, coming up with business ideas, and um, throughout the competition, we will select the winners and fund their business. So the church does not have to contribute anything. All that the church needs to do is to give us the platform to work with their young people. Yes. We will come around, uh, around the project with the youth, and then the winning group wins a certain uh, cash, uh, cash prize, which they are going to use to uh, run the business that, that they came up with. So if you want to be an entrepreneur as a young person, you got to believe in, in, in whatever idea that you have. It all starts with an idea. That's Definitely. number one. Um, uh, it all starts with an idea. And once you have that idea, believe in the idea. Don't let other people's opinion become your reality. Believe in the idea, work through it, and prove yourself that uh, you can do it. And then you can prove to the world. First prove to yourself, then prove to the world. Wonderful. I love it. And I, I'm looking forward to your next book. Obviously, I hope you're going to let me read this one. Absolutely. <laughs> and then I'm going to be reading the next book that Mike is going to finish very soon. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, we wish Mike all the best in his uh, project. Uh, hopefully, we'll... We'll see and hear more of you on our show. Um, thank you so much. This for is home for me. And thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, this has been uh, the Africa we want. We want an Africa with entrepreneurs. We want an Africa that believes in young people. This is Christine. And catch you on the next episode.